So to help you bone up on the skeletal system, let's begin by looking at its functions. The skeletal system very obviously helps in supporting and protecting the other organs of your body. That would have killed me except for the bones of my skull. It also helps in movement. Obviously, when my muscles contract, by pulling on my bones, it gives them an anchor plus some, uh, something to pull. So my bones can act as levers to help either magnify the speed or the force that my muscles are able to exert. Your bones store minerals. Calcium, for example, is involved in dozens and dozens of metabolic functions without, throughout your body. So in order for you to make sure that you have the right amount of calcium in your blood at all times, you store excess calcium in your bones and when you're starting to run out of calcium, you can take some of that calcium out of your bones and replenish your blood supplies. And obviously, your bone marrow is located in your bones, and that's where your body makes red blood cells, white blood cells, etc. Now, the cells of the skeletal system, the most important of those are the osteocytes, which literally means bone cells. Within the osteocytes, there's osteoblasts, which build bones. Just remember, osteoblasts build bones. While osteoclasts, you may have heard of the word iconoclast. That literally means you destroy icons. Well, iconoclasts break down or destroy bones. All right. Now, there's three main tissues involved in the skeletal system. There's compact bone, spongy bone, and cartilage. Let's take a look at this diagram over here of a cross-section of a bone, like a drumstick from KFC. And here, in the outer region of the bone, like it would make up the long shaft of uh, a femur bone, for example, you'll find this hard, dense bone called compact bone. Now, within it, you'll find osteocytes sitting in these tiny little caves, and they're being fed by these uh, arteries and veins that run through the middle of these canals. So you'll have these concentric rings of bone being made by the osteocytes with blood vessels running up the central canal of these uh, concentric rings. Collectively, this series of concentric rings is called an osteon, or some textbooks will call it a Haversian system, I guess, in, discovered by Dr. Haversian. And you, you can see, if you look here, that there's many of these concentric rings making up the dense compact bone. In the middle of the bone, around the medullary cavity, that hollow space where you'll find the bone marrow, you'll see this lighter uh, spongy bone, which instead of being hard and dense, while it's still hard, it has lots of gaps and spaces, and this helps hold the cells of the bone marrow in place, and it helps greatly reduce the overall weight of the bone. Now, the bone spikes that you see here are called trabeculae, and within them are the osteoblasts and osteoclasts that are uh, working on the bone, constantly building and remodeling it. Now, if we continue, you can see that there's this thing called axial versus appendicular skeleton. This right here is my, the long axis of my body. If we take a look at this diagram, you can see here the long axis that is called the axial skeleton, where in red, we've highlighted the appendicular skeleton, i.e. it's got your appendages on it. And so a lot of times when uh, you're studying the uh, skeletal system, you'll have to start memorizing the bones of the axial system, like the ribs or the cranium, or the bones of the appendicular. The femur here, or I've always found this one pretty funny, the humerus bone. Uh -huh. If we come back over here, there's two major kinds of bone formation or ossifications. There's endochondral ossification and intramembranous ossification. Now, endo means inside. Chondra is a root word that means cartilage versus intra, which means within, membranous means within a membrane. If we take a look at this diagram over here, we can see how endochondral ossification works. When you were first born, most of your bones were actually made out of cartilage. They formed a general model of the shape of the bone. Ultimately, bone cells started penetrating into that cartilage model. And as the cartilage model continued to grow to elongate, get a little bit wider, the bone cells slowly started building the hard framework of calcium, phosphate, and other minerals, calcium carbonate, etc. They started building that to create this hard, dense thing that we know as, as a bone. Eventually, all of the cartilage gets replaced, at least the part that formed the framework of the bone, till finally the only cartilage that you typically find is at the ends uh, to help form the cushioning joint surfaces of the bone. 
and it elongates. Now, this is one of the reasons why young children can actually take injuries that an older person couldn't because their bones are still a little bit flexible. So when they talk about a bouncing baby boy, don't bounce babies. But that's kind of what they're talking about. Now, intramembranous ossification, that's the creation of uh, bone in places like your cranium or other flat bones. And there, your brain originally was encased in this connective tissue membrane. And then the bone cells grew into that to slowly expand and replace it. And that's why you know that, again, talking about babies, everybody who talks to you about babies and you're about to touch them says, don't push there. There's that soft spot, and that's where the bones haven't finished filling in the connective tissue membranes that surround the brain. Now, if we take a look, I was talking about how the bones are fusing into each other. The bones of the cranium, and I believe there's about 14 of them, actually are separate bones, but they've joined together. Those joints are classified as immovable joints. Uh, and they form a particular kind of a movable joint called a suture. There's many different kinds of classifications of joints based on function, based on form, etc. And I'm not going to go through every single one because I doubt you'll ever need to memorize all of them. But some examples of common ones that you'll encounter are the pivot joints, such as the skull on top of the spinal column. It allows you to pivot like this. The hinge joints are ones like at your elbow or knee, where much like a door, they can open up in one direction, but not all the other way. Ball and socket joints are very important joints for our movement, and those in include our shoulder joints, as well as things like our, knee, or our hip bone. And it allows a really wide range of motion, and that's the skeletal system.